What is up YouTube? It's Kingfisher745 and welcome to your daily dose of beta day 3. In this one I'm going to tell you how I had a slight change of opinion on beta. And also we face our toughest opponents yet. So far we're unbeaten while attacking but that is going to change at some point. When that loss does inevitably happen I will tell you all about it in the daily dose and then I'll file it away until we get enough for a full video. So once I get about 3-4 to four losses, I'll post the video on my second channel and then I'll make sure to provide you all a link. But with all that being said, right away I could tell this team has some really impressive stats. At nearly 14,000 HP and having Falcon along with Invisible Woman, I just knew they were going to be very difficult to hurt. I was also worried about that Staff of Asclepios and their healing so we start by using the first Seal of Aknazak. The reason for this is because once we reach that third seal, then we can apply Despair. After that, we unfortunately miss with the Hand of Apocalypse, and that could be very bad. Our Havoc does proc uncanny coordination, so we're going to use Plasma Spheres. This attack at least exhausts two out of three of their members, but Invisible Woman is immune because of her shield. Then she uses Force Cage on Havoc and makes us waste our turn. After the enemy Falcon misses a Dive Bomber attack, we have a really important decision to make with Iron Fist. We could use our Heart of Shalau and then our Team Hill to prevent debuffs on our entire team. Or we could use it and then proc two attacks against Falcon. That way once he's gone they'll no longer have survival training. Okay so let's go ahead and hit him with our level 2 and then it should make him much easier to knock out which in turn weakens their entire team. Our first attack the White Hot Iron Fist does a nice amount of damage and then our follow up attack well it isn't that impressive. Then our opponent takes over 50% of our agent's HP with the Raph Shank. Now that is crazy. And that leads me to my ever-changing thoughts on preseason beta. Now before I was pretty skeptical on things working out for level cap tournaments. But after more thinking about it, also doing matches, and looking at other players' responses, well I no longer think it's the entire system that's broken, I now think it's more or less the agent. I think that's actually great news for level cap tournaments because once they figure out the agent, well then things should run a lot smoother. I'm a lot more confident that they can figure out how to fix the agent, and like their official Twitter page said, that's the whole reason behind a second preseason. They knew this idea wasn't going to be easy to implement, so that's why we're testing it out. So anyways, those are my thoughts as it stands, and of course they could change at any time. In the background, since the fight was pretty much over and Invisible Woman can be very annoying, I went ahead and sped up the finish. So I hope that's okay and I may use it in one other fight in this video. As for that opponent, I had to go ahead and check his stats because they did seem very impressive. And the reason they seemed that way was because they absolutely were. I guess we were a little bit outmatched but we still did manage to pull through. Now all those medallions of wisdom made me think maybe I need to upgrade my armory too. But at the same time this is only a preseason, so I'm not too sure if I should. What if they released even better armory items at the beginning of the regular season? Now that would be pretty bad. I definitely don't think they'll do that I'm just saying. Now on to the next battle it's going to be against another pretty scary opponent. This team also has higher health but this time it's 11,000 and they're also using Skurn and Heroic Age Iron Fist. Havoc gets to begin and so we use Plasma Spheres to go ahead and exhaust the enemies. Skurn also has her E-ISO that causes her to gain Hulk up, so that's pretty scary. Luckily their agent does use satellite support, so that's going to be the end of his turn. Using the Blackest Void would pretty much be a waste of time, so I'm going to use the first seal of Uncle Zack, followed by the Hand of Apocalypse on Iron Fist. He's next to act, so it would be nice to take him down. And we easily do that with our super agent. So what I'm going to do with Iron Fist is go ahead and use Heart of Shaolau and then we'll heal our entire team. This will also grant all of our allies rising up and most importantly prevent debuffs. All of Skurn's debuffs are erased and Motion Granite won't stun. Next on Havoc's turn I'm going to use his level 9 channel energy and then we'll use a plasma wave on the enemy agent. As long as this attack lands it should one hit KO him. And it does at nearly twice his remaining HP. So with our agent, I'll use momentary advantage and then up to two attacks with the hand. Of course since almost every hit does around 40k, we won't need a second attack. Once again I was curious what their armory bonuses were, so I went ahead and checked it out. And you know what, after seeing even more medallions of wisdom, 
This is really starting to make me jealous. I'm going to try to hold out, but I don't know if I can. Anyways, let's go ahead and collect our silver and move on to match number three. It's going to be against another respectable opponent, and I think most of the matches were stepped up for day three. It seemed very possible that I could lose my first match on offense. This agent is using two very good heroes and the Coulson's Revenge. Unfortunately for them, we do get to go first with our agent. This of course means someone's getting one-shotted, and it's going to be the enemy agent. I mean, the last thing I want is to get hit with that Coulson's Revenge. So this one is a no-brainer. Then with Havoc, I'm thinking about using our level 6, but I could have also tried for an early one-shot. It's very possible to one-shot someone with a Plasma Wave, even if it's in the first round, especially if it's a Bruiser. But since we didn't, I'll just go ahead and spread around the damage by attacking Magneto. We'll use a regular Iron Fist, and then Havoc gets an Uncanny Coordination. With this free attack, we will use our level 2, and that's going to be the end of Hercules. Magneto does use a Magnetic Field, but I'm not even worried about it because you know our hero is going to smash right through it. They don't call him the Super Agent for nothing. So here goes the Hand of Apocalypse. But first, his preemptive counter is interrupted, and then we do 41,000 damage. That's right around our average, but that was a non-crit. Now our next battle was the weakest of the bunch, so I'm going to go ahead and slightly speed it up. I really hope that's alright with everyone. Please let me know in the comment section below. This fourth match is going to be against Medusa and Avalanche. I also feel like I faced them before, but I'm not entirely sure. We are going to fly through this one even though I do make a mistake. With Iron Fist, I definitely should have prevented debuffs, but instead I went ahead and let Avalanche exhaust our team. Then right as I was using the first seal, I went ahead and thought, oh no, I'm exhausted, I should have attacked instead. But despite our errors, we're going to be fine because this enemy team really doesn't have that great of stats. If we were facing those first two teams again, you really don't want to make mistakes there. Their agent could easily take out an entire team with an AoE attack. And speaking of doing just that, beginning tomorrow I'll go ahead and throw on an AoE weapon and I'll show you exactly what happens. It's going to be ridiculous, there's no other way to put it. By the way, check out this plasma wave. It's going to do a massive amount of damage, right around that magical number 40,000. Now once again, we're going to get 10,000 silver, and then we'll move on to our final match. I actually think this is going to be one of the longest matches yet. This enemy has impressive stats. They're also running Quicksilver and Skurn with her store-bought E-ISO that basically mimics Heimdall. So yeah, I'll tell you right now, this is going to be a tough match. First, Quicksilver does about 30% damage. And then, we miss the combo breaker, meaning he gets Temporal Jump. Then after another blinding punches, we're just about at 50% HP. At this point, I decided to use Satellite Support. And then we're going to try to use the hand on She-Hulk. But to our utter dismay, she objects. Not only does this stop our Super Agent from hitting her, it basically saves her and allows her to do two attacks. With the first, she almost stuns Havoc, but we do have Relentless. Then she puts a stomp on Iron Fist, but luckily we can heal back all the damage. Also, to mention once again, we get Rising Up and Prevent Debuffs. This means that that enemy agent using Neuro Purge is basically doing absolutely nothing. Then he actually adds to that by using the Blackest Void, even though we have the Satellite Support. Next on Havoc's turn, we're going to use his level 6 Plasma Spheres. And the extra good news is our Iron Fist is going to interrupt Tag Team. That benefit comes as a result of using Satellite Support. By making sure Quicksilver no longer has stealthy attacks against our team, we can now gain Combo Breaker against his counters. Then on our Agent's turn, we're going to use Momentary Advantage, then the Light Fantastic adds a quick action. And even though Skurn does object, this appears to be a bug. See her E-ISO says chance to prevent enemy attacks, and this really is not an attack. So that's my only reasoning for why it would still go through. Now after using the first seal, we're going to go back after Skurn, and this time we do manage to hit her, and she's going to be easily KO'd. This will give us the next turn as well with Iron Fist, and so we'll go ahead and use our level 1 on the enemy agent. Right now he has a few debuffs including Exhausted, so once he uses Satellite Support, that's going to be the end of his turn. It looks like Havoc's going to get the honors of knocking him out, first by using Channel Energy, and then a Plasma Wave. So here goes nothing. It does nearly 12,000 damage and that's the end of the enemy agent. 
At this point it's a 3 on 1 advantage and we should easily win this match. So as we finish off Quicksilver, I just want to let you know the next video is going to be a review of the Blade of the Corruptor. I also want to apologize for how late this video is, but I was feeling kind of sick today and that's also why my voice is kind of gone. I'm sure it'll come back, but hey, this is the daily dose of beta, so I have to make a video every day, and so I'm definitely going to try my best to do just that. Now back to the fight, I was actually shocked by how long Quicksilver lasted. At the time, it actually felt like it was taking forever, but I figured we would just keep whittling down his health, and then my agent should finally finish it. I can actually promise you that he will on this turn. We're going to use Improbability Field as a quick action, and then the Atom Smasher will end it. I actually think this is going to be one of our biggest hits in all of preseason beta. So here it comes, an 83,980 damage hit. That will conclude our fifth and final match for day three, and let's go ahead and check out his stats. He happens to have a full armory of medallions of wisdom. At this point, I feel like this item is taunting me. But anyways, let's go ahead and get our daily roulette spin, and then we'll wrap up the video. I'm really hoping we win 10 gold, and that would definitely help us buy the Blade of the Corruptor. But I highly doubt we're going to get that lucky. So anyways, I want to thank you all for watching, and ask you to please like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, good luck, and take care.